morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Today we are going to be reading a text called A Dinosaur Named Sue. As we read, remember to monitor your comprehension of the text. Draw on the strategies you know to help you stay focused and read with understanding. Reading A Dinosaur Named Sue, we are going to be seeing a few of the text features that we have already learned. Make sure you pay attention to them as we read because they always give us additional information and it's always related to the text. So the title says, A Dinosaur Named Sue. Now let's figure out what makes this dinosaur Sue so special while there is a text after her, okay? By Terry Patterson. Here we go, let's read together. August 11th, 1990. Paragraph one. I am sad that our dig is ending soon. I've been in South Dakota for 10 weeks. It's been such a great summer. Badlands National Park is amazing. We dug up many dinosaur bones. Some are more than 60 million years old. Very good. So on the bottom of the paragraph, I'm looking at a map. And the map says Badlands National Park is in South Dakota. And then you see a picture of the park here with the title Badlands. And then you see it's pointing to the state of South Dakota. So the author is trying to show you exactly where this national park is, okay, on the map. So you have an idea of where it is and where the bones were found. So when did the author write this text? August 11, 1990. August 11, 1990. And how does the author feel so far about the dig? Sad. And why is she sad? Because it's coming to an end. Because it's coming to an end. So that means that she is actually enjoying her time during this dig because she doesn't want it to be over. How long has she been in South Dakota? Ten weeks. She's been there for about ten weeks. And how does she feel about Badlands National Park? Amazing. She says it's amazing. Paragraph two. August 12, 1990. What a day. One of our team members, Sue Hendrickson, found some big bones sticking out of a cliff. They were too gigantic to be anything but a dinosaur. Sue knew they were from a meat eater. In this part of the world, it could only be a T-Rex. All right, so this is one of our team members, Soon Hendrickson, found some bones sticking out of a cliff. What kind of person is Sue, based on what we just read? A scientist. A science, but specifically, what kind of scientist? A paleontologist. A paleontologist, which is a fossil scientist. Very good. What is a meat eater called? A, a carnivore. A carnivore, very good. And the reason why they said it can only be a T-Rex is because scientists know, they knew where um, dinosaurs roamed throughout the earth. So they knew where they would find specific dinosaurs. So that's how come they figured this must be a T-Rex in this area, okay? Safe? Let us read paragraph three. Sue brought back two pieces of bone to show Pete, our team leader. He agreed that they were T-Rex bones. We all went to see where they came from. Paragraph four. When we got there, we couldn't believe our eyes. More than 10 bones stuck out of the cliff. Pete thought that a whole skeleton might be buried there. He named the dinosaur Sue after the person who found it. So that goes back to our title. Now we can understand why our title is called Dinosaur Sue, right? Yes. Because Sue Hendrickson was the person that found this T-Rex dinosaur in the cliff. So they named the dinosaur after her, okay? And this is a picture of Sue right here at the big site. Let's read paragraph five. Our problem is that the bones are under almost 30 feet of dirt and rock. It's going to take a lot of work to remove it. So you can see that these are the paleontologists and they're sitting on top of the dirt and the rock and you can see 
that this is not going to be an easy feat for them to get these skeleton um, bones out of here, okay? And at the caption, it says, Sue found bones sticking out of a cliff. Let's read paragraph six. Here we go. August 14, 1990. Today we got started digging up the T-Rex. We couldn't use a big machine to move the rock and dirt. A machine might break or crush the fossils, so we did all the work by hand. Metal bars helped us pull away large rocks. We used to pick up break up smaller rocks and shovels to move dirt. So what conflict were they having here in this paragraph? What conflict were they having? Yes. They couldn't, they couldn't use the big machine. They couldn't use the big machine, why? They could break or crush the fossils. Very good. All right, now we're up to August 18, 1990, so some more days have passed. Let's read paragraph seven. Our hard work and skillful work over the past few days finally paid off. Today we got down to the fossils. Then we had to be even more careful. We used small hand tools to remove the dirt and rock around the bones. So she's being more specific on how they've had to handle, carefully handle these fossils so they wouldn't crush and break, all right? Paragraph eight, August 21st, 1990. While we worked, Pete told us about other T-Rex fossils that people have found. Some finds were just a few bones. No known T-Rexes have even half their bones, but it looks like Sue found almost a whole skeleton. You'll see a picture and it says, Sue used tools to carefully remove rocks and dirt from the fossils. And you can see in her hand, she's using a specific tool. And then you can see over here, she's using a brush. And you see other tools over here to show you how carefully she's trying to dig up these fossils without breaking or crushing them. Because remember, once she does that, she has to get them back to the lab. And it's a lot easier to transport them to the lab as a whole fossil than a broken up pieces of, of different fossil pieces. Okay. On top of this page, it says, we remove rocks and dirt from school skull, so your skull is the head. So right here, they're working on removing the dirt from the head part. Let's read paragraph nine. It says, August 23rd, 1990. Pete dug out the skull today. It's almost five feet long. He thinks that this T-Rex was a giant. Its bones are bigger than any T-Rex he has seen. So in paragraph nine, the scientist is making a comparison to the other T-Rexes that he have found. He's saying that the one that he found in this cliff is a giant compared to the size of the other T-Rexes that he's probably seen in the past, okay? Paragraph 10, now we are on to September. September 1st, 1990. We left the dig today. It took 17 days to dig up Sue. The bones are finally on their way to the lab. We took extra special care packing them up. They will take a long time to clean up the skeleton, but Sue will make a fine museum exhibit one day. Safe. So who can tell me how the author organized this text? Yes. Chronological order. How does she know that? Yes. Because it because it's telling you everything in order. It, it's like giving August you the different dates in 1990, order. Then September 1st, 1990. Very good. The way that she put her notes in her journal, she organized them by specific dates, and the dates are in a specific order. What is the genre of this passage? Yes. Non-fiction. And how does he know it's non-fiction? Yes. About what? It's given facts and information about the dinosaur named Sue. What is the author's purpose in writing this text? Yes. To give us more facts and information about dinosaur suit. What was the most important thing that the author was trying to get across to you that that he repeated several times throughout the text about the dinosaur? Yes. So used tools to 
tools to carefully remove rocks and dirt from the fossils. Very good. So throughout the text, it keeps talking about how the paleontologist Sue and her team have to carefully use tools to collect this fossil out of the cliff. Okay. After reading the whole text, who can give me the central idea of the whole text? What is the text mostly about? Yes. A girl named Sue finding a fossil in a cliff, and people named the dinosaur after her, and they used different types of tools to get rocks and dirt from the fossils and bring it to the land. Very good. Excellent job. So it's a the story, the text is mostly about a paleontologist named Sue finding a T-Rex dinosaur in a cliff, having to use special tools to recover the dinosaur and bring it back to the lab carefully where they can further examine it. All right, all right, I'm gonna ask you a few questions about a dinosaur named Sue. Who was the one who wrote the journal entries? Yes. Sue, Sue Hendrickson. What did she find? Yes. Where? On a cliff. And inside of a cliff. Very good. When did this take place? What year? What year? Yes. 1990. 1990. Very good. Where was the dinosaur located? A cliff where? Yes. Badlands. Yes. South Dakota. South Dakota and the Badlands. Very good. Why was this dinosaur so important? Yes. Because all the pieces were found. Because. Uh, more likely a whole dinosaur was found and the pieces were still together. They weren't broken or crushed. So it was a lot easier for them to examine it. How does the nice. author feel about finding dinosaur Sue? Yes. She thought it was amazing to find a dinosaur. And what comparison did the author make to the dinosaur in the text? Yes. He compared the T-Rex to a giant. Very good. And why did the author give us a text feature of a map? Yes. To show where the park is located. To show where the Badlands Park is located and also where we could find the fossils. The fossils of the T-Rex. The book Investigating the Past and we are on the story A Dinosaur Named Sue. Go ahead and turn to it. We're going to look at the author's main point. What important point does the author make in a dinosaur named Sue? Before we begin there, go ahead and write the title. <coughs> the main point is something within the text that the author keeps speaking about several times throughout the text. And he makes a point to keep showing you either in a photograph or within every paragraph, he makes a point back to this point. Which point is it that he was trying to make throughout this entire text? Yes. Sue was supposed to catch the That they had, the, the paleontologist had to use certain tools to carefully remove these bones to transport them to the lab. Very the authors write it. genre is this text? Yes. And how do you know? It's 
states facts and information about dinosaur soup. Very good. So look in the text, and I want you to find me some text evidence to back up our main point. Yes. We use pigs to break up smaller rocks and shovels to move dirt. And you say shovels? Very good. Find me another one. Yes. We can't use big machines to move the rock and dirt. A machine might break or crush the fossils. We can't use big machines to what? To move the dirt or rock. So we have to what? So we have to use the brushes and small, uh, small tools to use to get the process. Summarize our lesson today. We read a nonfiction text about Dinosaur Sue. We read about why she's named Dinosaur Sue. We read about where scientists located her and how fragile her bones are um, when they try to move it and, and all the hard work and dedication that the scientists or paleontologists put into locating her and trying to move her. Okay? A dinosaur named Sue by, by Terry, Terry Patterson, Patterson, August 11, 1990. I am sad that our day is ending soon. I've been in South Dakota for 10 weeks. It's been such a great summer. Badland National Park, August 12, 1990. What a day! One of our team members, Sue Hedrickson, found some big bones sticking out of a cliff. They were too gigantic to be any.